promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hello and welcome wrestling fans to another retro review for Cheap Shot Entertainment. Today we're squeezing our way through 2003 and this brings us to Judgment Day and it took place on May the 18th 2003 at the Charlotte Coliseum in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is the fifth edition of Judgment Day and it is a Raw and Smackdown joint pay-per-view. The original brand split of course took place a couple of years prior and uh, the event had an attendance of 13,000 fans and the main event was Brock Lesnar versus Big Show. It uh, also had an appearance on WWE Smackdown Here Comes the Pain. Great game and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much it. It's uh, a good show from what I remember. It's got Stone Cold and Bischoff doing their joint uh, do general manager duties and uh, that comes off the back of Backlash <clears throat> um, where Stone Cold would come back the night after on Raw and uh, take up his place as the joint general manager with Eric Bischoff and uh, yeah it's, it's a good dynamic it works and Stone Cold is doing a good job here as always of getting the fans ready making them cheer getting them in the mood and just before we go into the main part of the video I'm going to give you the Sunday Night Heat uh, results because we don't get those on the network I am watching this on the network uh, the Hurricane defeated Stephen Richards on Sunday Night Heat, which was, of course, back in the day, the pre-show event, where they actually had wrestling on it. Imagine that, eh? Anyway, we're going to go into the main part of the video and the podcast. We're going to crack on with watching the show, because in 2003, they had some really good opening packages and just looking at the screenshot that's on my tv at this moment in time it's going to be a good one so i'll see you there so we set off with the show stone cold comes out says he's going to drink some beer he's got himself a skybox he goes Gives Taz a can of beer and heads up to his skybox. He gets escorted up there. Obviously, Taz and Michael Cole are on the commentary for SmackDown. JR and The King for Raw. Like I said, it is a joint pay-per-view. But just saying that, the opening package was really good. And it was themed around uh, Judgment Day and... Uh, and a noose and going to the gallows and all that kind of stuff, which was really cool. They don't do those things anymore, which is a real shame. Anyway, we're going to the first match, which is a six-man tag. Um, <laughs> having uh, done plenty of six-man tags, both refereeing and being part of, whether in the ring or on the outside as a manager, these things are usually a bit of a cluster. And it is a way to get people on the show. So we have John Cena, the Doctor of Thugonomics, as he was back in 2003, coming out to the ring, having a rap, uh, telling people that he's going to make them cheer for the good guys, like the Godfather movies. Um, he's got good fellas, and he's going to be called Corleone, because the girl likes Italian sausage, and she swallowed his... Anyway, um, he's teaming with the FBI, Chuck Palumbo and Johnny Stamboli. Of course, Nunzio is also part of that group, but not in the match. They are going against Rhino, Spanky. Of course, Brian Kendrick uh, had multiple runs in WWE and been subsequently fired from each and every one of them. And in AEW as well. Uh, and uh, Chris Benoit. But... Obviously, they can't delete him from history completely uh, because, you know, he's on plenty of pay-per-views and 
uh, people want to watch these pay-per-views and for what it's worth I'm probably going to get some heat for this but as a wrestler I do appreciate who he is and that's that's my opinion as a as a person <laughs> not so much obviously he did what he did and it's absolutely deplorable but as an in-ring competitor he was very very good and I enjoyed all, if, most if not all of his matches. Anyway, uh, this being the the the, uh, the side one that I didn't particularly enjoy because obviously it's a six person tag, six man tag. So <clears throat> the um, team of Chris Benoit, Rhino, and Spanky get on top really early. Spanky hitting the outside dive before the bells even rung, and Spanky is the man designated to be inside the ring. Uh, with John Cena starts throwing forearms. Cena, obviously the more powerful, starts throwing forearms on Spanky and gets the upper hand. Um, <clears throat> it would all break down very, very quickly with all six men appearing in the ring to take one another out. Chris Benoit would hit a diving headbutt. The referee completely lost control here, which is understandable like i say i've been a referee in six man tags and they are not fun um so yeah the i've lost track of who's in the ring and who's not uh spanky would get a uh, a tag on chris benoit as he took the sternum bump into the corner and uh, whether that was planned or not it just seems like a little bit of um oversight because Generally, in a six-person tag, in a tag match in general, you don't throw your opponent into their own corner. You keep them away from there. But, like I say, uh, it would come down to Chris Benoit getting the... Um, Nunzio coming in, Chris Benoit getting the uh, crippler crossface on Nunzio. This gave Stan Bowley and Palumbo enough time to take out Spanky with their finishing move and subsequently John Cena, Johnny Samboli and Chuck Palumbo would win the match. Now the most impressive thing about this match is the fact that Chuck Palumbo managed to keep his cigar stub in his mouth for the whole match. Very impressive indeed, even though cigars are horrid things. I was quite impressed by this. Anyway. Really difficult to judge, this one. Uh, really difficult to give it a score. They obviously had a set amount of time to get everything in, which they did. Wasn't ever going to be much of a wrestling match. It did have a little bit of a story coming into it, but ultimately it was just there. Uh, usually the first match is to set people up, get them cheering, and I suppose that's what this did. You know, three fan favourites against John Cena and... And the FBI, who are McMahon's sort of hitmen, if you like. Um, but ultimately, it fell. <laughs> it fell way down. One cheap shot out of five. I'm not going to give this anymore because it wasn't great. <laughs> anyway, we move on. We go back to the Skybox with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And he is chatting to the lady who's serving him beer and hot dogs and stuff. So if you've got hot dogs, if you've got burgers, you've got mustard, yeah, he's going to go and get mustard, didn't give him a beer. And then Eric Bischoff shows up and says, everything here, all that stuff that you see is 50-50, co-general manager's skybox. But uh, Bischoff wants some scotch. We don't have scotch. We only have beer. Muller light. Uh, oh, sorry, Miller Light. Uh, not Muller Light, that is yoghurt, and that would be completely different. Miller Light is the only thing they have, and subsequently they've set up the um, skybox with a load of boxes of Miller Light. So uh, Bischoff has the lady pour the beer into the cup, and Stone Cold gives him a cheer, and his beer goes flying all over the window. Now you know why the window was shut. Obviously to keep the fan noise out, but also because of that spot right there. 
So we go into the next match, which is a ta another tag team match. Hold on a second, there's three tag team matches in a row. Because I've just got up to the third match. So this is a tag team match, and it is Stacey Keebler accompanying Test and Big Papa Pump to the ring. Uh, they are a makeshift tag team. Stacey Keebler thinks they can get them firing on all cylinders. But before they make their way to the ring, we have La Resistance. Sylvain Ranier and René Dupree, who happens to live down the road, literally, from me, which is crazy. Um, well, I say down the road, uh, in the next town over from where I live. So, that is nuts. Um, it doesn't look anything like he did back here until 20 years ago, definitely not, but crazy, eh? It's one in WWE was there for quite a while he's now living in the next town across crazy crazy world we live in small world as well anyway uh la resistance cut a promo they say i don't know why you americans haters you're all stupid and ignorant and all that kind of stuff well i mean it's a big clue isn't it it's a big clue there as to why people hate you anyway <clears throat> Yeah, Test and, and Scott Steiner come down to the ring. Everything goes wrong. Miscommunication. La Resistance win the match. Uh, <laughs> not much going on here at all. Uh, constantly, Scott Steiner and Test are having blows. Uh, takes away from La Resistance, who, was actually, who were actually a very good tag team. And... Obviously, this is on the raw side of things as well, so it's not getting any better at this point. I do feel like it does get better later on, but it's been a good long time since I've watched this pay-per-view. May eat my words. Anyway, <clears throat> we, um, yeah, so the whole time Stacey Keebler is in the mix as well with uh, Test being the boyfriend and Scott Steiner just being there because they've got nothing else for him to do because he went into the main event with Triple H and he wasn't very good. So now he's in a tag team with Test. I feel sorry for Test personally. Love Scott Steiner. I love his promos anyway, especially the Scott Steiner maths, but he wouldn't come into his own until he went to TNA. And uh, that is fact. So what am I going to give this match? It's got to be another one cheap shot out of five. Hopefully, the next match, things will pick up a little bit. Moving on now, we're going to the back with Eddie Guerrero. And he's being interviewed about the missing link to his tag team, Chavo Guerrero. And Eddie says that they're underestimating, underestimating him and... The fact that he can choose a tag team partner for this match. Now, he says that it's got to be someone who's just as crazy as a battle as he is. And someone who can be trained in the ways of Los Guerreros. And that person is Tajiri, who walks in, says something in Spanish and... Proceeds to be very Japanese, nodding his head and going, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I love Tajiri, he's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Of course, they are going against the current tag team champions, Team Angle. And this match is also a ladder match. So, yes, we've had three tag team, cha three tag team champions, three tag team matches in a row on this show at the very start but this one has an extra stipulation it also features two very good teams in terms of the smackdown tag division who were absolutely killing it when compared to raw back in 2003 also those tag team titles are absolutely gorgeous i did have one i had to sell it i fell on hard times i wish i hadn't it's one of those things. That is life. And if I ever get a chance to buy another one, I probably will. Because that blue tag team championship, 
from 2003. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And the only thing that could make it even more beautiful is Stephanie McMahon posing with them when they first came in. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get on to the match. So the match is obviously, uh, it's no rules. There's ladders involved. You can use other weapons as well, but these teams use the ladder brilliantly. Not too much, but really well. And they do it safely, which is a very difficult thing when it comes to a ladder. Because <clears throat> he, uh, all four of these guys, they've, flipping and flying and flopping all over the all over the arena um several spots where people are tipped off the top of the ladder and uh, one in particular is charlie Haas, who hits hard on that floor now as a wrestling trainee i find it difficult to even step down from the ring apron uh because it's a long way down can you imagine being on top of the ladder and getting pushed off with the only thing that would break your fall, either the steel girder on the side of the ring or your face. Um, out of the two, I don't know which one I'd choose, but there you go. Um, yeah, wicked match. Really good match. The pace has really picked up with this one. Uh, back and forth, obviously, it is tornado tag rules. There's no tagging in and out or anything like that. The referee is literally just there to make sure that whoever grabs the championships from the ring at the top of the ladder does so properly and brings both titles down. I don't even know what would happen in a tag team ladder match if one team got one championship and one team got the other. Because there is always that possibility, I suppose. Anyway, we we, we, we weave our way... I will get my words out. We weave our way to the end of this match where it is Eddie Guerrero who is attempting to climb the ladder after doing a sunset flip bomb on Charlie Haas, uh, taking him out completely. He is lifeless in the middle of that ring. And uh, Eddie Guerrero is climbing, climbing. Shelton Benjamin comes in to try and stop him. Tajiri... Comes in, squeezes his way underneath the bottom rope. He'd been taken out earlier on by Team Angle. Climbs far enough to spit the green mist into Shelton Benjamin's face, taking him out completely. Eddie Guerrero goes up top and retrieves the title. One given to Tajiri and the other for himself. What a match. Really good match. Possibly one of the most underrated ladder matches in WWE history. They always go on about the triple threat TLC matches and other ladder matches. Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon. Genuinely, this match is very, very good. And I'm going to give it four and a half cheap shots out of five. And wow, what a match this is. <clears throat> so we go into the skybox again and Stone Cold giving props to the tag team match that we've just seen. Absolutely phenomenal. Offers Eric Bischoff a beer who drinks it like a, as Stone Cold would describe it, a sissy. And uh, whilst eating a burger, looks like a tasty burger to be fair. Uh, but we are going into another multi-person match now because it is the over the top battle royal for the intercontinental championship and it is christian booker t rvd test val venus gold dust kane is there anybody oh yeah lance storm and chris jericho going against each other for the chance to win that championship the Noted, the only person that hasn't won the championship previously is Booker T. So, how would this play out? Well, we get Kane out first after you know all the people in the in the battle royal team up on him. Uh, RVD takes him out. Kane doesn't like the fact that his tag team partner took him out. So, even though he's been eliminated, 
he then comes back in, choke slams everybody, including RVD, which would eventually lead to RVD's elimination. Test goes out as well, and uh, we and Val Venus, in fact, very, pretty quickly, and we're down to the final four: Chris Jericho, Christian, Booker T, and Goldust. Now, all four of these guys have formed tag teams in some way, shape, or form with each other, and. Uh, yeah, it is Booker T and Goldust on top. Booker T is almost eliminated by Goldust. Booker T turns it round on Goldust. Goldust goes out next. It is then a two-on-one situation with Christian and Chris Jericho against Booker T. It would be Christian who would hit the on prettier on. Oh no, it was the uh, yeah, it was the, it wasn't the on prettier. It was the reverse DDT. And uh, Chris Jericho going for the line salt. Christian then would betray his former tag team partner and eliminate Chris Jericho from the Battle Royal. It is then Booker T and Christian. Christian gets eliminated promptly. But in the melee, it is Chad Patton that is taken down by a swinging drop kick or pendulum drop kick from the ropes. And uh, no, it wasn't. It was a baseball sliding drop kick. Hush my mouth. And um, yeah, Chad Patton's out. Christian gets eliminated. He doesn't actually call for the bell. Uh, it is the music that just hits uh, to signal that Book T has won. And um, Pat Patterson is uh, going to give the belt to Book T. Christian has a mod and takes Pat Patterson out, the first ever Intercontinental Champion. Very well documented from 1979. Uh, Christian gets in the ring, takes out Booker T with a title shot, throws the belt out and throws Booker T out. It is at this point that Chad Patton miraculously comes back to life and announces Christian as the winner. And we have a new tag team champion, new tag team champion, new Intercontinental Champion in the form of of the peep master the peep show whatever you want to call him christian and we move on actually a pretty enjoyable match very quick though for a battle royal however it was decent so i'm gonna go ahead and give this one two and a half cheap shots out of five as we move on in the event <clears throat> So we move on uh, after the awesomeness that was the ladder match. We get a bikini invitational between Tori and Sable. And it seems to be that this rivalry, if you can call it that, has been developing ever since Backlash, where Sable's come back called Tori fat. And she's definitely not fat, of course. And... Uh, yeah, seems to be like they, they had a bikini contest on SmackDown and Sable decided that Tory lost. 2003, everybody. Um, and now we get a bikini invitational. The fans vote, Tory wins. Blair. Moving on. And uh, we get another match. <laughs> if you can call it a match. It is... Mr. America, what's up with that? Who is interviewed by Gregory Helms, ace reporter. Ace, the ace reporter says, I have it on good authority that you, Mr. America, are someone else under that mask. And when Mr. America says, well, dude, my sources tell me that you are also the hurricane. What's up with that? Now, that actually is probably the best part of this map because that interaction right there was funny. We move on to the match. It is Mr. America uh, versus Roddy Piper, who comes out with Sean O'Hare. Mr. America invites Zach Gowin down to the ring. The definition of a one-legged man in an ass con kicking contest. Of course, it was Roddy Piper who grabbed the leg of Zach Gowan. It was 
Hulk Hogan who gave the American flag to Zach Gowan. This was all moving towards getting Zach Gowan onto the roster. Um, <laughs> you can't really call this a match. It's two 50-plus year olds jiggling about. Uh, Piper more than Hulk Hogan. Sean O'Hare gets involved. There is lots of rest holds, lots of uh, sleeper holds, which Piper used to do back in the day. So I suppose that's okay. And um, yeah, it would be uh, Hulk Hogan who would come back from the sleeper hold, do his fight back, do his comeback, his shine, uh, the three punches, the whip, the big boot and the big leg, uh, or the leg drop rather, and uh, go for the pin. It would be Mr. McMahon, who is down at ringside at this point, would go and try and stop the count. But it would be Zach Gowan that stopped McMahon stopping the count. McMahon then goes for Zach Gowan. Zach Gowan climbs in the ring. After the win, obviously, it is Mr. America, definitely not Hulk Hogan, that wins the match. Mr. McMahon goes, okay, okay, and walks off. That's pretty much it. But before... All of those matches. We also got a segment with Eric Bischoff and and uh, Stone Cold up in the skybox. Eric Bischoff now is is getting drunk, and Stone Cold is encouraging him to drink more, eat more, soak up the alcohol, la la la. And um, yeah, it, it's going to develop, shall we say? Um, I seem to remember this pay per view being being a lot better than it actually is. So with that match, uh, I'm not going to rate the bikini contest because it's a bikini contest. And with that match, I'm going to give it a one cheap shot out of five. And that is being very, very generous. We move on to the next match now, which is Triple H, the World Heavyweight Champion versus Kevin Nash. The returning Kevin Nash after being introduced back into the WWE with the NWO. Um... He's come back expecting to form his clique with his old buddies, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, finds them at odds with each other and, of course, is caught between a rock and a hard place. He decides to go with Shawn Michaels on this one because Triple H made that choice for him in terms of uh, Triple H turning his back on his former friend, and, um, yeah, it leads to this match. We get a nice promo package. We get uh, Stephanie walking up to her former husband and um, basically wishing him good luck, telling him to be careful and all that kind of stuff. Triple H walks straight past her. And, uh, obviously, Stephanie's face at this point. North Carolina's own. Ric Flair, woo, makes his entrance into the arena to great fanfare because he's a hometown boy. And then we get the match. <sighs> yeah, like I said, I thought this pay-per-view was much better than it was. I was very wrong. Um, so far, we've had one good match, <laughs> maybe one and a half. And then the rest of it has been promos from Stone Cold and Bischoff, along with a bikini contest. Um, <laughs> yeah, not much to say about this match. Kevin Nash comes in like a house on fire, gets up, gets the upper hand. Triple H does try and come back, but cannot do so. Ends up with a sledgehammer shot and in front of the referee as well, which gives the referee chance to disqualify Triple H and he keeps the championship oh yes it was for the championship as well hey. one cheap shot out of five at least this makes it easy to edit because there's a lot of copy and pasting with these scores we move on to another segment with Eric Bischoff and Stone Cold now where they're still in the skybox Stone Cold is now getting hugged by the waitress which i'm sure he's loving and eric bischoff looks like he's gonna blow and he uh he does subsequently blow chunks 
and into the crowd as well and all over that poor girl that was serving the pizza and the burgers and stuff like that uh, yeah wwe 2003 people don't expect too much it is the beginning of the downturn luckily we've turned a corner now and it is actually entertaining again but it wouldn't be for another 20 years <laughs> no i'm lying it would be for another what 15 years before it started getting entertaining again ironically that would be during the pandemic where they really had to try <laughs> and it just went up and up from there in my opinion but anyway we move on to the next match so the next match is for the women's championship and it is actually a pretty good match it wasn't given very much time but for the amount of time that all these matches have been given, this one was actually entertaining. It is a fatal four-way match featuring Jazz, the current reigning and defending champion as of Backlash 2003. She is being accompanied by Theodore Long, who says the man is under conspiracy to take that title away from his client. And... Uh, the challengers, Trish Stratus, former champion. Victoria, who is being accompanied by Stephen Richards, former champion. And Jacqueline, former champion. All of these competitors are very good in their own right. Now, in 2003, the women's division was just there. People would rather have bikini contests than pay attention to the real women's evolution, the first one uh, in modern WWE anyway, that was taking place in 2003. Thank you to uh, Finley, as it was, who trained these women to actually be entertaining and put on a good match. Uh, Trish looks like she's got the the hang of this one, the edge, um, before trying for the Stratus faction. And this is how the match finishes. The rest of it is just a bit of a, you know, just hitting the spots and, and doing the stuff because it's a fatal four-way match. All competitors are in the ring at the same time. Uh, Trish Stratus looks like she's going to be on top here and goes for the Stratus faction. Only for... Victoria to chuck her over the top. It would then be a a submission move by Jackie on Victoria, who almost looked like she was going to win before Jazz comes in with the big splash and the DDT, vicious DDT. Don't see that very much in modern wrestling. A DDT as a finisher. DDT on Jackie to win. Victoria is being taken out by the submission. Trish Stratus has been taken out by being let go over the top rope and smashing her beautiful face off the floor. And uh, yeah, Jazz picks up the win. All of this match actually makes sense. And that is something that's lost these days with the copious amounts of super kicks and things like that but either way this match the second best match on the card so far and I'm happy to give this a three cheap shots out of five because I was thoroughly entertained by this match all four women putting it all on the line doing everything they could with the small amount of time they were given and it is sad that they were given so little time because I feel like this match could have gone on a bit longer and been even better than it was. And it's now time for the final match of the evening, featuring the reigning defending champion Brock Lesnar, of course, winning the championship against Kurt Angle, who is still injured at WrestleMania 19 in one of the greatest matches to ever appear on the grandest show of them all. And he is going against longtime rival. The Big Show. No Paul Heyman at ringside for this one. 
probably for a good reason because this match is brutal. It is a stretcher match. It is for the WWE Championship. And yeah, it doesn't take long for these guys to spill to the outside and start using what is available to them on the outside of the ring. So there's a couple of stretches on the outside. They make very full use of those, throwing them at each other. Uh, two big guys just beating the snot out of each other. I love it. Uh, smashing them into each other's ribs. A uh, couple of near misses for both guys here in terms of going over the yellow line, which is placed at the entranceway. So the the idea of the match is to incapacitate your opponent so much that you can place them on a stretcher and roll them over a line uh like I say placed at the entrance way so a couple of near near misses here for both guys at one point Brock Lesnar is on the stretcher uh sits or big show just close lines him and Brock Lesnar does what Brock Lesnar does best and that is sell he rolls all the way over the line but obviously this is a good idea for Michael Cole and Taz to mention that even though he went over the line, he wasn't on the stretcher, so the match continues. Uh, we get full use of the entranceway here. Brock Lesnar uh, using it as a chin-up bar and swinging and kicking Big Show in the face. Big Show very nearly going over the line. However, with Brock Lesnar using one of the camera cables to incapacitate the big show it's still wrapped around his neck quite tightly and that stops this attempt for Brock Lesnar to get the big show over the line so to speak uh, so that brings that to a halt we then get Brock Lesnar trying to use the the trolley the gurney uh, to hit big show in the ribs big show fights back pushes Brock Lesnar all the way to the ring and Brock Lesnar goes back first into the apron big show on top now he gets angry throws one of the stretchers out of the way and places another stretcher in the way noting all the time that they go so far as to place the nice padded cushion on the stretcher before putting their opponent on it <laughs> that's how brutal this is you've got to have padding if you're going to defeat your opponent anyway <clears throat> Uh, we get back into the ring. Big Show very much on top at this point and still not being able to incapacitate Brock Lesnar enough. Rey Mysterio's music hits. Big Show is kind of knocked out at this point, but not quite. He comes around just long enough for Rey Mysterio to hit the 619 into Big Show's gut and tries to come back and take his legs out big show just smashes ray mysterio with a clothesline and he gets taken out and just as the big show gets that glint in his eye brock lesnar bursts through the set on a forklift truck with pallet attached what is this going to be used for well it's going to be used for Rey Mysterio to choke Big Show out, Brock Lesnar to hit the F5 and place the Big Show onto the forklift truck with the stretcher on it. Of course, you've got to have the stretcher or the backboard and apparently that counts because the Big Show is completely out at this point. He is placed onto the pallet. He's rolled onto the pallet with the backboard he is face down. He is on that pallet, on the forklift truck. Brock Lesnar expertly drives the forklift truck over the line, places the big show, what, 20 feet in the air while he celebrates on top of the forklift truck. Brock Lesnar wins this match. It is a fantastic match and one that you don't get to see very often in the terms of a stretcher match, because I can't remember another one of these happening since. Now, they probably have, but nothing 
comes to mind straight away answers on a postcard or leave us a comment in the comments section if there has been another stretch match i'd be interested to see how that panned out and uh, possibly it came at extreme rules when they changed the name of that pay-per-view but uh, yeah genuinely i can't think of another one and it is a good way to finish a few to to end uh, a rivalry really although the rivalry would continue in in future years but um yeah really good way to end a feud as a stretcher match and i really enjoyed this match and it's clearly the best match on the card not by much the uh ladder match comes in a close second followed by the women's title match and the rest of it is just toffee um so I'm going to give this one four cheap shots out of five. Well deserved. It is a fantastic match. It is brutal. It is. It makes use of the stretches, uh, the backboards, the ringside area, the 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 entrance way, which is phenomenal in this in this show, by the way. And uh, yeah, really good match. So overall, Judgment Day had a wicked opening package not much else um it's not a good pay-per-view at all overall the standout matches like i say are the stretcher match the tag team ladder match and the women's title match now that is two for smackdown and one for raw as far as it goes so yeah smackdown's killing it at the moment when you consider that raw has the talent that it does um the the battle royal was okay but um kind of waylaid really and uh yeah it's not a good show uh it's not one to watch but we move on to insurrection it always made me laugh because it has the word rection in it um yes i am i've not grown up in 20 years june 7th 2003 coming to you live from the uk this one so in my neck of the woods i uh, can't remember where this one's from it's usually either from uh, manchester or london generally but uh, i'll have to have a look for that coming up so that is the end of this retro review let us know if you've watched judgment day 2003 anytime recently and let us know what you thought of the show I will see you next time, wrestling fans. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're listening to the podcast, do exactly the same. Because that is how we get more views. Um, <laughs> and now it's time for a message for our sponsor. Me! Um, <laughs> I'll see you next time, wrestling fans. I love doing these pay-per-view reviews. They just come in thick and fast. And I don't have a lot of time to do them. But I love doing them anyway. And there you go. That is my life. Where is me? Anyway, goodbye. Hiya.